Well, hello everyone to this relatively quick and short video about my new main computer here. Now, excuse the terrible lighting because I'm filming in my room and as stated before, I'm too cheap to buy real lighting equipment and it's hot in the garage. So, I mean, like, I'm not going out there. It, I'd have to film at like 11 at night before it's like comfortable enough to be out there. So we're doing things inside. So yeah, as you can see, I built uh, my new computer inside the uh, what was supposed to be the Windows 98 machine case. Uh, we did use that, uh, I believe it was the, the Win 9X machine video or something stupid like that. You know, that, that period where I just couldn't be fine with the 98 machine and I just kept doing random stuff with it, I've... I've settled it down in its own, it's its own thing now, and I'm not changing it for a long time, so uh, I've made myself that rule that I'm not going to change it for at least like two years or something. But I decided to use this case because it's such a good case, and I spent $50 on it, and it was basically in brand new condition. So it made the perfect candidate for a sleeper PC. Also, it's massive on the inside. It has great airflow, especially for a case at the time, and it looks pretty cool. So we're going to take a quick look at what's going on with the hardware here, take a look at the case a little bit, and uh, I'm probably not going to turn it on, really, because uh, like there's nothing special about it. It's just running Windows 10 LTSB uh, with uh, O and O Shut Up 10, I think that's what it's called, to help block all the telemetry. Because I don't have a Windows 7 install disk to really use. So I had to go with 10. Because there's really not Windows 8 drivers for this. So yeah. And it's also running Ubuntu 18.04. Again, really not anything special. But I will put some performance uh, benchmark thingies on screen at the end. So you can uh, get an idea of uh, what exactly this machine performs like compared to my old computer, uh, which was an FX 8320 uh, overclocked to 4 gigahertz with 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM in single channel and a AMD Radeon R7370. So pretty old computer. It, it worked, but it had a lot of stability issues like the motherboard. The motherboard was kind of kind of on its last legs. So yeah, let's take a quick look through the hardware here. So here we have a DVD-RW drive and a USB 3.0 and front panel audio thing because this case doesn't have front USB or front audio. So that's kind of a necessity to have, at least for me, because I don't want to have to keep going behind the computer all the time to plug in stuff. Yeah, so these are black right now. Uh, I've thought about spray painting them or uh, plasti dipping them white to match the rest of the case but I kind of like the black look of them to be honest it doesn't really bother me as much as I thought it would uh, I was originally I thought this DVD drive I had a, a beige faceplate that matched it but it turned out I didn't so that's why I would have went black if I had the beige faceplate that actually worked for this then I would have plasti dipped the front panel thing uh, white as well. But I think I'm just going to leave them for now. It's really not that big of a deal in my opinion. So on the back, uh, this motherboard is kind of cheap. Uh, but So it just has this plain silver I.O. plate, which helps make it look a little bit closer to a sleeper. The power supply being black doesn't exactly help that though. But yeah, I actually really like that this motherboard has dedicated PS2 ports and not a combined uh, single port because it means if I wanted to, I could use a PS2 mouse and a PS2 keyboard at the same time, which I'm not, but I do plan on getting a Model M hopefully at some point. It's probably going to be a Unicomp, but yeah, I can at least use, you know, PS both PS2 ports at uh, you, you get you get the idea. We do have three video outputs on the motherboard, VGA, DVI, and HDMI, none of which are used because there's no onboard graphics on the CPU. 
Then there's uh, six USB 3 ports on the back. Two of them are this teal color. I don't know what's different about them. I should probably look up in the motherboard. Maybe they're USB 3 Gen 2. That might be what they are. I, I'm not sure though. Gigabit Ethernet and just very basic audio. Then down here we have the graphics card, which has three display port and a single HDMI port. So inside the computer, I'm going to use a flashlight for this so you can help see it. Uh, there's a ton of cables. <laughs> and uh, this is a modular power supply. This is an EVGA 600 BQ, a 80 plus bronze semi-modular power supply. And there's still cables going everywhere because this case does not really have any sort of options for cable management. Which is kind of lame, but I also kind of don't care. There's no side panel window, and messy cables really don't affect airflow all that much. So, the motherboard is an Asus B450 Prime something. It, there's definitely Prime somewhere in the name. Uh, this is an MATX board, so uh, there's nothing below the graphics card pretty much. I did this just for cost, really. I, I could have spent like 30 or 40 more dollars just to get a full ATX board. And I really didn't feel like it, to be honest. I was like, I'm probably only ever going to have one graphics card in here. And like, I'm not really going to put any other expansion cards in here. So I just said, you know what, we're just going to go with the... Uh, we're just going to go with an MATX board. So yes, this is a B450 motherboard. So that means Ryzen, if the AMD cooler didn't give it away, or the Ryzen sticker on the front of the computer. Uh, there's a Ryzen 5 2600 under there. 6 core, 12 thread. It's running at stock speeds right now. Uh, I might overclock it in the future, but as for now, I'm just running it at stock speeds because I didn't feel like messing with it too much yet. Probably a couple years down the road, I'll probably mess with overclocking. We also have the stock uh, Wraith, Wraith Spire cooler. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's actually a pretty good AMD cooler. And it's pretty quiet too. Uh, for RAM, you can't see it under all the, under just all these cables, but there's two gig, not two gig, two eight gig sticks of Corsair DDR4, LPX, whatever, Vengeance, ooh, ooh, fancy RAM, ooh. Uh, it's running at 2666 megahertz. I know that's not really fast for Ryzen, because Ryzen uh, loves clock speed for the RAM. Uh, if I might upgrade the RAM in the future, or just mess with overclocking the RAM in the future, I know that would probably give me a big performance boost by just overclocking the RAM, but... For now, I haven't messed with it. Uh, in here we have the drives, which you're going to yell at me that my SSDs are just floating around in here. Uh, I swear, I planned to at least have one of them in a bracket, but the bracket didn't work for whatever reason. Um, I'll probably get like some really cheap just metal like adapters, because the, the adapter that I had actually had a little PCB inside that actually adapted it out, which is completely pointless, and I think that's the problem, is that PCB or whatever got broken. So if I just get some, like, cheap metal adapters that you just screw the SSD in on the bottom, then you screw them in on the sides, that's probably what I'll do. I just haven't gotten around to getting any. We have a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. Uh, this was ripped out of my old computer just because I didn't have the money for a new hard drive, and... It, there's still enough space on there for the time being that I'm not super worried about it. And moving down here, you can actually see the PC speaker, which is actually hooked up. I'm thinking of taking the PC speaker out and putting it in the DOS machine, because right now the DOS machine just has a really crappy little piezo beeper, and it really doesn't sound that good for a DOS machine. It's like, this thing beeps like once when I turn it on and that's it. And I don't need, I don't need the big fancy speaker for that. So I'm probably going to take that out and put it in the DOS machine at some point. But now the very interesting part here, this is a eight gig RX 480, uh, made by XFX. If I am correct, 
This is the reference cooler, reference design. And it's one of my favorite looking reference coolers of all time. And that's why I actually, I bought this specifically. Was that a mistake? Mm, it kind of is, kind of not. It, it definitely runs very hot and it can get kind of loud. But I just, uh, I love the way it looks, man. Even though there's no side panel, I just, I love the way this card looks. It's so minimalist and yet so just nice looking. But yeah, I probably should have gotten an aftermarket cooler version. It probably would have been a little bit cheaper too. But I got a pretty good deal on this card. I only paid $110 for this with free shipping on eBay. So yeah, that was a pretty good deal. I could have gotten like a RX 580, but that would have cost a lot more if I bought it, especially if I bought it brand new. So the total cost for this build, I don't exactly remember, but it was under $500, I think. Or it might have been just over $500. Uh, it wasn't very much, though. Uh, not, account, not counting the case, because I had already had the case for a while. Ah, God, I just cut my finger. <laughs> not really cut it that much, but I definitely ripped a little bit of skin on it. Nope, I definitely broke the skin. That's deep. Huh. Well, ain't that fun. This is why old cases kind of suck, but they look cool. So, yeah, you can definitely see the blood coming out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to end the video here. Uh, throw the, uh, I'm going to go put a band-aid on my finger. And, uh... I'll put the performance things up on screen really quick. And yeah, so thank you for watching the video. I know it's kind of short and really nothing special, but I just figured it'd be kind of cool to show this off. So thank you guys for watching, and take care.